A think tank has suggested tagging lower risk offenders and letting them serve their time at home in, in a bid to tackle prison overcrowding. The Institute for Government say that if criminals don't breach their conditions and no space becomes available during their sentence, they will never see the inside of a prison cell. It comes as governors today warn that there are just 700 spaces left in male prisons. I mean, it is a big problem and how do you solve it, Yasmin? Perhaps allowing some criminals, less risky criminals, spend their sentence at home is a good idea? Well, whether it's a good idea or not, it's inevitable that we can't have more than 700, 800 prisoners going in. This is a crisis, actually, it's a crisis. And whoever comes, and we know who, we think we know who's coming in. That will be one of the things they'll have to deal with quite quickly. I know there are political divides over this. You know, there are people on one side thinking, you know, bang them all up. And there are other people who think that, you know, there are some prisoners who sh really shouldn't be in prison. But at the moment, it's a crisis. So in terms of what to do next, I think the new prime minister will have to do some tag electronic tagging and perhaps actually improve the probation services mm -hmm. and, you know, make sure that it works. Um, but there the is probation no choice. services are also stretched and this I would know. put increasing pressure on the probation services. On top of that, you made the comment that there are some people in prison that shouldn't be in prison. Well, if they shouldn't be in prison, then just don't have them in prison. Why yeah. have them at home and tagged? That's just costing money and putting extra No, because, you know, if you've broken service. the law, um, say, you know, the, the number What are of, we talking about here? So, say shoplifting. Okay. It's, it's becoming an epi epidemic. Part of the problem is poverty is causing it. Part of it is, it's, you know, it's become a real thing with gangs shoplifting happening in awful, awful ways and uh, shopkeepers really terrified and so on. Now, some shoplifters don't need to be in prison, I think. Um, and so we could look at that. Um, there are other small crimes for which... Drug I think offenses, there's a, there's, a, there's a kind of gender divide here. More women are put into prison for lower crimes. I have read this somewhere oh. at one point. Now, I don't know whether that shifted, but certainly the women's prisons, and I've been in women's prisons, I've also been in male prisons, um, and, you know, even years ago, they were pretty miserable places. So, you know, I just think we should think again. I wonder whether there's benefits actually to having criminals serve their time in the home. They say that one of the, the consequences of putting someone behind bars is on the children of the criminal. And it can really affect them, particularly, they say, if it is their mother. And therefore, having a criminal spend that time at home... It, may work out for the better in the long run, Crystal. I think that this is a really stupid idea. I understand, I agree with you that we're sort of in the last chance saloon and in desperate territory on that. I, I agree and say this might be one of the only ideas left, but I think it's incredibly stupid for, for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, I think that a lot of um, people who low-level offend. I think one of the problems that we've got in this country is that low-level offenders, it takes quite a few offences until they actually go to prison. And the problem with that is that actually, and I've spoken to a lot of people in the criminal justice system about this, that it means that actually they, they don't get scared of the system until they've been in it for, for so long that it almost becomes a badge of honour. Whereas perhaps if those lower-level um, uh, offenders were given, you know, a night in the cells or uh, a couple of weeks in prison, it might actually stop them reoffending. So I'm worried that then them going into their home instead, that's going to be no disincentive to not offend again. Secondly, um, I think that it would make more logic to me that if we did have to do this, that it would be people who have already served some of their sentence and actually have a proven track record of being well behaved. But this and have is already done... the problem I think they're having is this is already happening. A lot of prisoners are now leaving yeah. twelve weeks or ten weeks before the end of their their due sentence and spending that time tagged and at home. But so at least they've done some time that. in prison. I think going straight into the home. I mean we've got as Yasmin and you're absolutely right, we have an epidemic of various lower level crimes that seem to be forgotten now. And I don't think that you're gonna solve those lower level crimes by 
putting people straight into their homes where, of course, they've got, you know, loads of entertainment. They've got... <laughs> it's basically, you know, I'd, I'd love to just be able to stay at home. It would be absolutely DVD. wonderful, you know? DVD is a punishment day. I think the, the other thing that no, we're maybe no, missing no, here, sorry, Yasmin, no, is I the just... victims of the crime. And they may not see this as much of a punishment. Absolutely. And, I, I you know, but listen, losing your freedom, if tagging works, and often it does, not being able to step out of your home unless, you know, whatever, there's, you have to go to hospital or something, is a big loss. L losing your liberty is a big loss. It's not easy. But secondly, also, there are some people, especially men, male prisoner, prisoners who've been in and out, who actually quite like being in prison. Because, and it's become a kind of school for further crimes. So actually, maybe making somebody stay at home with the family and, you know, maybe put, being put through some kind of retraining of the mind that you don't live like this. Isn't it going to be more difficult to uh, work out who they're associating with? You know, if you're in your house and you're tagged, you can stay in your house and you're tagged. You, you can talk to somebody through the window. Somebody can come in. Yeah, but your, your phone is and taken and your computer is taken. Okay, but it's but, but then you you might be living with your partner. They have a phone. Yeah, it might be quite hard to manage who the criminal is associating with, and therefore they could still be running the ship from within. It's still the house. safer than the people they're associating with in prison. Okay. We've but, seen. Can, but can they run a, a, a drugs business, yes. a shoplifting yeah. business, no, more can... easily at home or in prison? <laughs> well, I would argue probably prison... more easily at home. Prisons have become drug businesses. We've seen documentaries but, but about But why them. make it easier? Like that, That's what I, I can't get my head around. I, I totally agree that there's a crisis and something needs to be done. And actually, we need to start building prisons and we need to start building infrastructure in this country to actually accommodate the population. I just feel like we're sort of giving up by saying, oh, you've done something bad, like, just, just go home and watch, watch Storm. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to pick a programme, it's not <laughs> a bad one to watch. Tim from Merseyside, you're up first. What do you think about letting criminals spend their sentence in their house? No, I don't think it's a good idea because, uh, you know, criminals, uh, if they're in their own homes, they can easily get out of their own homes and commit a lot more crimes, even if they're uh, tagged. Mm. You know, that, that doesn't stop them getting out. So that would be true, but then they would breach their conditions, Tim, and in that scenario... Well, they yes, they would be... breach their conditions, but, you know, that comes afterwards. So you're... Breaching so... their conditions. They can breach their conditions to start with, and the uh, consequences come later, after uh, innocent people have suffered from the crimes they've committed. OK, are there, are there certain crimes that would make the individual less risky? I'm trying to think what this would be. Maybe blue-collared crime, maybe fraud, something like that. Where they're fraud, not, yeah. They're not necessarily like, a risk to society, no, but course, they still like, need to be punished. They are things like fraud, you know, whether they go to open prisons or they get, uh, you know... Oh, God, they get uh, uh, things like... A financial penalty, uh, they get fined, you know, they a fraud. Why, why would you bring fraud into it? I'm thinking about, you know, serious crimes where, you know, they, if they're um, pl placed in their own homes and they can easily get out and commit more okay. crimes, and even they, if they are tagged. Tell, tell me what the serious crimes are because, just to confirm, this suggestion is for um, less risky criminals, so it's not for violent or sexual offenders, it's not for terrorists, it's not for those kind of individuals, it is for the lower level crime and I, I do struggle to use that because I'm sure if you're a shop owner you're not going to think shoplifting is a low level crime, but, but those are the sort of crimes that we're talking about, that you're not endangering other people necessarily. No, if they're low level crimes like fraud, yeah, you know, the, 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 they don't need to be sent to prison. Oh, so you wouldn't send anyone committed of any kind of fraud, even if it's millions and millions of pounds, to prison? Well, it depends if it's an enormous fraud where, where people have suffered okay, but and you're... have lost their pensions, things like that. Yes. Yeah, and then, yes, I would send them to prison. Okay. But if it's low-level fraud, well, no, you don't. OK, well, I think we're going round in circles, Tim, but... Thank you very much for your call, but I think Tim sums up actually how the population would feel about this if it is somebody that isn't necessarily posing a risk to individuals in a sort of violent or sexual 
way that perhaps this is a, a good suggestion in the, in the short term to tackle the issue? I think there are a couple of interesting points from Tim's call. Firstly, I think you're right to, to call out the difference that some people see with low-level crime, because I think that my point is that low-level crime, if it's not perhaps more harshly dealt with with certain people, it leads to higher-level crime. But uh, also, I think the other thing that, that, that Tim exposed was if, if people know that there isn't the room in the prisons and they're tagged to stay at home and then they break those conditions, well, are they still not going to go to prison because there isn't the room? Well, I think the, the idea point? would be to leave enough space in the prisons yeah. for the percentage of people that would offend while they were in house arrest. Well, then put them in the prison if there's enough space in the prison. But the point for them. is, prison often people who've committed low level crimes go to prison and learn. Actually, it's in prison that they graduate to Criminal more serious Criminal university. Mm, it is. But and we so, need prison reform. I, I, I think we're you know, actually in agreement I mean, that. I've met young guys who, you know, stole cigarettes or whatever they stole, I don't know. And they ended up really being groomed in prison by older prisoners. Mm. So you have to be really careful. Prison isn't the place which sorts criminals out. Not our prisons anyway. And, and perhaps the, the house arrest has to be that. done in, in tandem to, or in conjunction with rehabilitation of some kind. John from The World, you're up next on the phones. What's your thoughts on this think tank suggestion? Um, basically, uh, the way I look at it is to stop the criminals first. And it, I believe in full, there's a lack of discipline around okay. and it should be full conscription to people when they leave school, except for certain ex you know, extenuating circumstances, like basically if they want to go on to further education, fair enough. But there should be discipline instilled because this is when your gangs are forming. When kids come out of school, they've got nothing to do. They form gangs, they start all these criminals, and that also will start to cut your prison population down. I mean, John, unfortunately, there's lots of kids out there that aren't even going to school. They're supposed to go to school, they're not. And you want to put national service in there. How are you going to get these kids that aren't even going to school into national service? How are you going to get well, them to go there? Well, I'm not on about kids. I'm talking about, in general, conscription should be made. Conscription should be made from the so very people... beginning. Well, they have to start somewhere. But hold on, and... uh, John, just to be very clear with what you're talking about when you say conscription, so are you talking about people that aren't necessarily in work? You want them to go and do some no. sort of... No, no, no. Conscription into the forces and when they leave school, when they used to have conscription. Has anyone ever saying, looked John? at what the... That's what I thought you meant, but I'm telling you, if they're not going yeah. to school, how I'm asking you, how on earth are you going to get them to turn up for their, well, their why, shift? Why, well, why aren't they going to school, for God's sake? Why, why aren't they going to school? Isn't you know, it's, you know, that's parents' problem. They should be in a very minority. I'm talking about generally to cut the... I mean, that lady on your show there yeah, was on about the prison population and prisons being overcrowded. With conscription, you could cut, cut your prop, the prison population down. So, you know. John, are you suggesting we would take people that have committed crimes and rather than putting them into prison, make them join the army? Because no, I'm sure no. professional soldiers would have no, an issue no, with no, that. No, no, you don't wait for them to go into crime and then put them in the army. You, you have full conscription like it used to be okay. from, the, from the age of, say, 18. Predict right? the future. Uh, go in, into the age of 18. Go into the forces... Right, say for three years, okay. right, get some discipline instilled, yeah. and basically then you, you will cut your crime rate right down. When they okay. used to have conscription, when I was in the Air Force years ago, mm -hmm. and there were still people conscripted into the forces, has anyone ever looked to see what the crime rate was in this country when we had conscription? Well, I, I mean, know? no, I don't have the stats for that, but John, we've gone slightly off topic, but I hear you're in support of na some form of national service in order to get more... Um, a, a towing of the line of society. John, thank you very much for your call. Thanks for all your calls on this.